Good morning guys, I'm Dr. Greer and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to choose the right size breast implant. Um, I think you guys know I've been trying to get some more face. So if you have topics that you want to hear about, I would love if you'd leave a comment on the video and I'll try to get them addressed in some future videos. They're a little hit or miss right now. Um, I don't have a regular day yet that I'm posting. Today was kind of a bonus because the kids decided to get up at 5.30, so I'm at work a little early. I think you moms all know how that is. But I'm gonna be a little productive, and today we'll talk about how to choose the right size breast implants. This is always a major question for my breast augmentation patients, and it's really a pretty important decision. So I just wanna reassure people in general, if patients are unhappy with the breast implant size, they usually wish they'd gone a little bit larger. And I think that's very common. Um, you know, when you get breast implants, you actually get used to your new body more quickly than you would think. So initially, things feel a lot bigger, they look a lot bigger, and then once you get used to that, you're not feeling that same difference that you did right after you got the implants. So rest assured, it's very unusual to have a patient who feels overdone or too big. Um, and underdone sometimes happens. Again, it's not super common, and we spend a lot of time in our consultations talking about size and addressing the size. So first off, what are you looking for in terms of appearance? Do you want to look just filled out? I know a lot of us moms, after having kids, things get kind of deflated and you've got more skin than breast tissue, so your goal may just be to restore the size you have and fill out that loose skin. Or you may wanna go bigger. If you were never really well endowed naturally, maybe A or B cup, you might wanna be proportional. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there you're getting toward a little bustier or fuller framed, and that may be in the D cup range. And then I've had some patients say, you know what, I wanna be as big as possible that we can make you safely do, and that's okay too. It's just good to have an idea in your mind of what you wanna look like after surgery. Looking at photos will also help. Realself.com, that's R-E-A-L-S-E-L-F.com, has a really big variety of before and after photos for breast augmentation, so you can kind of get an idea of what look you like. Now, a word of caution when you're looking at before and after photos. Everybody's built really differently. If you're very tall and you have a very narrow chest, implants are gonna look different on you than somebody who's shorter or has a broader chest. So when you're looking at before and after pictures, try to find patients that are about the same build as you. Like I'm kind of stocky, I'm not exactly narrow framed. Um, and then try to find people who are about the same weight as you as well, because somebody who's super skinny is going to have a much more dramatic result with the same size implant than somebody who's a little bit heavier. So that's very important um, when you're looking at photos. I love when patients bring photos to their consultation because it just really helps me get an idea of what they wanna look like. And you don't need to just bring photos of what you like, bring photos of what you don't like as well. It's very helpful to say, okay, this one, not enough of a result, this one too much, I don't wanna look that busty. And then hopefully you know, you'll fall somewhere in the middle and have some good photos there. You can print them out, you can just link to them on your phone, you can do a screenshot. Um, if you don't know how to do that, it's just the power button and the home button on an iPhone. I'm not real Android savvy, but I'm sure somebody can chime in and help with that as well. So do look at photos beforehand, bring them to your consultation. I think most surgeons find it super helpful to get a really good idea of what you're looking at. So we address, address talking about making sure those photos have the same weight and frame. So how do we choose the actual size? There are some three-dimensional um, scanning cameras that can give you a before and after size. I'm not that technologically advanced in my practice yet. So I use these gel sizers from Mentor. It's a whole sizing system and they come in multiple sizes. So this one's a 150 and this one's a 350. Um, 150 is not an actual size implant, by the way. They don't make them that small, but what you can do is you can stack the implants. So you take the big implant and you put the smaller one. I like to do it under, actually, because then I feel like you get a more natural look in your bra or your t-shirt than if you put the small one over it, so you get a better approximation of what it would look like. So this is what I use in my practice. We have a whole little cabinet drawer full of multiple sizes, and you can mix and match to get the size that you like. 
Um, it's a nice sizing system. There are a couple tips and tricks that will make it work better. First, we do provide you with a sports bra to wear because we want you to have not an underwire bra, just a sports bra that's form fitting. So we have a lot of those at my practice in different sizes that we wash, by the way. Um, but in terms of what to wear, wear a form fitting tank top or t shirt to get an idea of what you're going to look like in clothes. Now, one thing, looking at the before and after photos versus looking at yourself in clothing, implants always look bigger when you're looking at a nude photo. Once you're in clothes, they're going to look a little bit smaller. So look at the sizers with just a bra and look at them with a tank top or a form-fitting t-shirt to get a good idea of the style and look you like. Um, another thing that really helps, I find, is if patients bring a friend or a family member who knows what their goals are and maybe have looked at some of their desired before and after photos. That will kind of help because, you know, you look in a mirror and you sort of have a warped view of what you look like. It can be really helpful to have a friend there to give advice and say, no, nah, nah, that's a little big or no, I think you can definitely go bigger. And then finally, I always schedule patients to come try on sizers when I'm in the office because I think a lot of times it just helps to hear, okay, no, that's not a big size for your frame. I know you want to look not overly dramatic and that's not going to, um, just based on my experience with years of doing implants. So having a friend, wearing a form-fitting shirt, and then having your surgeon available to help not choose but reassure you that you're making a good decision. Um, I always let the actual implant size be the patient's choice. It's your body. You know, if there's a technical reason I can't do the size you want, like it's just going to be too big compared to what your tissue can safely handle, or maybe you're being more conservative, then I think you need to be to address the look that you want, then we'll talk about that. But the ultimate number is yours. Um, and then I usually order a size above and below just in case there are any unforeseen, you know, tissue doesn't stretch or it doesn't quite fill you out enough. But 90% of the time I go with exactly what we chose in the office. So that's the gel sizing system. Now say you haven't even done a consultation with a surgeon, there are some home hacks you can use to choose your breast augmentation size. Um, I would recommend getting like a little Ziploc sandwich bag and then you can fill it. Rice works great. Water also works, but rice is nice because if the seal on the bag isn't perfect, then you're not going to actually spill water all over your shirt. But what you can do is fill it with milliliters of water. So if you get a measuring cup, you want one of the clear, like the Pyrex ones with the lip on them. It's called a graduated glass. But if you look, not only will there be ounces and cups, but usually there's milliliters on a side. And the implant sizes usually range anywhere from 250 milliliters all the way up to 600 milliliters. So you can use water or I recommend rice for the mess factor and fill some sandwich baggies with that. Now, if your little sandwich bag won't fill to 600 milliliters, like, you know, make three that have 200 milliliters of rice, but that can kind of get you a close approximation too if you want to play with it a little bit at home or if you want to, you know, have like your husband or friend get a look of what you're thinking about and they can't come to your consultation, then that's another really good way to approximate how to, like what size implant you want. All right, looking back at my list, if you didn't know I have it taped down to my um, tripod so I can hit all my talking points. Okay, I did talk about, I will offer some advice on whether I think something's too big or too small, but ultimately it's your decision. So what happens if you don't like the size, right? That's important. The good news is it's very, very easy to change out an implant once you've healed. We go through the same incision. All the tissue's already been dissected because we've made that pocket that the implant goes in. So it's really like pop out the Im old implant, put in the new one, very simple. Now, you will have to pay for the new implants. You will have to pay for the operating room time and the anesthesia time. It's usually a pretty quick surgery, an hour at most. Um, generally, if patients are within one to two years of having a breast augmentation and they just want to change sizes, I don't charge for that. My ultimate goal is always to make you happy and, you know, it's, it's not a hard or lengthy surgery. So I'd rather do it and have you happy. You want to know how many times this has happened in my practice? None. So far, generally people are pretty happy. But rest assured, if you're not, it can be fixed or changed. So another question, what if your breasts are different sizes? If they are, you're probably thinking, oh, it's just me, nobody else is like that. Guess what? 
They all are different sizes. Nobody's breasts are exactly the same, and that's totally normal. Um, the other thing that may be a little asymmetric is your chest wall. Your ribs can be a little more prominent on one side, and that is totally normal. So if your breasts are really like visibly different sizes, then ideally we wanna put different size implants in. Now silicone implants come pre-filled, so they usually come in either 25 or 50 milliliter um, increments. And just for your FYI, 50 milliliters is almost two ounces, so like a double shot glass is the amount of volume we're talking, or a little bit less than that. So if you have not much of a size difference. It may be hard to adjust and get a perfect match with silicone implants. Generally, we can get pretty darn close. And the thing is, they're gonna be closer than they were before surgery. They just may not be exact. The other way to get a good size match is to use saline implants. And those are a silicone shell. They're emptied, and then in the operating room, I fill them with sterile saline. And they have a range they can be filled too, but I can tweak it and add a little bit more on one side and a little bit less in the other. In general, um, you know, when I'm doing a breast reconstruction, I will use saline to get a better size match. In terms of cosmetic surgery, often the silicone gets it pretty darn close. So really that's not a specific reason where you should go with saline over silicone, but you can. And that's something we can talk about at the consultation. But rest assured, it's totally normal to have different size breasts, that's really the status quo for most of us, and we can improve that quite a bit during your augmentation surgery. So let's talk about another thing that is really, um, it's kind of a subtlety of breast augmentation, and it's something I think not that many patients are aware of, and that is the position of your breast on your chest. And sorry for my awkward hand gestures, I always tend to gesticulate to myself, but it really, it makes the most sense. So your breasts are centered on your chest, right? and they don't touch in the midline. In some people they do, in some people there's more space. Um, they go to a certain height below your collarbones, and then you have the inframammary crease, which is the fold under your breasts. So a lot of people's breasts droop down below that crease, that's called ptosis, um, but the actual breast tissue should be centered up above the crease, and that's something that we address with a breast lift if there is some droop. So in terms of how high your breast goes and how far medially, which means toward the center, those are things that are inherent in your body that I can't reliably change. So one request I will often get is people want really good cleavage, right? Now your breast implants can go close together, but I can't make them go any closer than your natural breast. And if you release too much of that tissue to try to move them together, you can get what's called a synmastia, or you may have heard the term as the uniboob. Um, there have been a, at least one patient on botch who actually had a uniboob to the point where she could move the implant to the other side. Sorry, I hit my microphone. I realized that was probably pretty loud. But anyway, the uniboob is obviously something we want to avoid. Synmastia is not a good look, and it's hard to fix, too. So in terms of how far toward the middle your breasts are, that's just the way your body is. Implants aren't going to change that. And if you want that really cleavage -y look, you gotta get a push-up bra, even with implants, because that push-up bra is gonna push them up into the middle. That's, that's what it does. Thank you, Victoria's Secret, for making that up. Um, now, in terms of how high your breasts are, too, where your breast tissue is, is where it is. We can't move it on the chest. We can bring it up above the crease to be back where it should be, but I can't move them higher on your chest reliably with implants. So your implants are gonna be centered under your natural breast. If your natural breast droops down below the crease under your breast, then we can bring it back up. But we can't move them closer together and we can't move them higher than they are naturally. So that's just something to be aware of. And Again, it's a subtle thing to look at, and it takes a lot of practice looking at photos to see that. Um, but that's something I always try to point out to patients before surgery, on themselves, in the mirror, on their photos, so that they understand what their implants are going to look like and what they can. So, let's see. I think I've hit all my talking points. If you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comments. I would be happy to probably message you back or type the response in the comments. And again, if you have any other topics you would like to hear about on videos, I'm game, any plastic surgery topics at all, um, especially cosmetic stuff, obviously. I don't do a lot of like cleft palate, I don't do craniofacial, but in terms of body contouring and liposuction and tummy tucks and facelifts and eye lifts, and all that stuff. I do a ton of that. I'd be happy to address any questions. And 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're in the Cleveland area or close and you want to call us for a consultation, our number is 440-974-8577. Thanks so much for watching.